everybody. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 102. On Now You Know. Get everybody, we're doing a giveaway at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. Support for this episode of Tesla Time News comes from Wonder Capital. I earn 7.5% investing in solar energy. We'll tell you more about it near the end of the show. All right, so Jesse, do you remember Bo from A Better Root Planner? We met him in Sweden when we were there. I do remember that. Yeah, that was by luck, by chance. I know. He's a great guy. He writes this awesome program to help you plan your route in an electric car of any kind. And uh, he just sent us some really cool Model 3 data. The Model 3 has been around long enough, and he's been collecting data from people who use his program. So let's share some of the things that he's found out. So look at this graph. This shows power consumed on the left in kilowatts and speed in meters per second on the bottom. So as you can see, the faster you go, the more resistance you encounter, um, the more power you need to maintain that speed. Now, the takeaway, I think, is that if you look here on the chart, that he's figured out that 143 watt hours per kilometer, if you're traveling at 110 kilometers an hour, or 218 watt hours per mile, if you're traveling at 65 miles per hour. Now, if you don't drive an electric car, you're probably mm -hmm. like, what are all those numbers? Right. It's kind of like telling you your gas mileage. Right. And what this is telling you is that the Model 3 gets tremendously efficient usage of its energy. I mean, it's practically double what I get in my leaf routinely. Yeah. So th it's fantastic. Now, moving on from this, we see charging information. So this is showing a graph that shows you when you plug in at a supercharger, how much power is going in. And so this shows that when you, your battery is at about 10 to 50% state of charge. And what does that kind of mean? That means, you know, how full it is. Okay. Then you're getting the full 120 kilowatts from a supercharger. And then as you see the line going down kind of linearly, it shows that you that drops off as you approach fully charged. Next here, we have data both in kilometers and in miles to show you how the Model S, the 3, and the X all do during summer temperatures um, when they are driving. And so what we're showing here is the X is in red, and that uses the most power, obviously, it's a 6,000 pound car. Yep. The S is in blue, that's a 5,000 pound car, and the 3 is in green, it's a 4,000 pound car. Right. Pretty interesting data here. This one, I think, might be one of the most interesting. Really? Why is so that? So here we're comparing uh, 100 kilowatt hour batteries mm -hmm. um, in the S and the X compared to the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack in the Model 3 long range. Oh, so almost not a fair comparison. Right. But you can see that the Model 3 still it has uh, more range than the Model X. That's really interesting. So that's really cool. The Model S obviously has more range than the Model 3, but... I mean, look at that. Now, does this kind of show you that your optimal speed looks to be about 60 kilometers an hour? Yeah. So, I mean, if you're hypermiling, it means that it's about 40 miles an hour in, in these cars. And then lastly, what I thought was really interesting is uh, Bo figured out that if you, what's the best car for um, taking a road trip in? Yeah. And he found out that the Model 3 long range actually has the shortest time on the same trip. Right. So what we mean by that is if you're going on a trip with 200 kilometers between superchargers and you're traveling about 75 miles an hour between the chargers what is the total time for a 1000 kilometer or 620 mile road trip and the model 3 long range has a total trip duration of nine hours and 43 minutes of which an hour and 23 is charging mm -hmm. and as you can see here the model s has a 10 hour and five minute trip model x has a 10 hour and 29 minute trip right that's because the model 3 can charge faster really cool and that's the car with the 2170 batteries. Yeah. So, Bo, thank you so much for that information. And don't forget that if you want to figure out, like, how to plan your next trip, a better route planner is the place to go. There you go. You know, when you were born in, uh, you were born north of L.A., we mm -hmm. used to, we'd go to Dodgers games. And you couldn't believe how hard it was to get out of that parking lot after the game. Like, there's one road, and it's just bumper to bumper for a long time. Okay. Why, why are you telling me this? Oh, I'm telling you this because of the dugout loop. The, du the dugout loop? 
What? Yeah, it's this new thing from the Boring Company. Check this out. The mm -hmm. Boring Company is proposing to build Dugout Loop, which is a zero emissions, high speed underground public transportation system from the Los Files, East Hollywood or Rampart Village neighborhoods to Dodger Stadium in the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, the purpose of the Dugout Loop is to help reduce traffic in Los Angeles by providing a clean and efficient public transportation option to Dodger Stadium. Dugout Loop will complement existing public transportation systems and provide an all electric and affordable option that will transport baseball fans and concert goers directly to the Dodger Stadium in less than four minutes. Wow. So it's a 3.6 mile tunnel. It'll run parallel to sections of the 101 highway near the stadium. And um, it's going to cost a dollar. To to ride it? To build it? To ride it. Oh, to ride it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I have no idea how much it's going to cost to build. Mm -hmm. um, initially, here's the funny thing, though. It's only going to carry 1,400 people per event. That's only 2.5% of what Dodger Stadium can hold. That doesn't seem like enough. It doesn't. Um, they say they'll be able to up it maybe to 2,800 passengers per game if they get permission. The total number of people a year that it'll carry would be 250,000 people. So if you do the math, at a dollar a ticket, and say that's one way, so say $2 for a round trip, Okay. that would be half a million dollars. Is it going to cost less than that? Or is it going to cost remotely anywhere near Maybe that? it's going to be subsidized by the uh, Dodger Stadium. That would be my guess. I would guess that that's a big boost to Dodger Stadium to get rid of 5% of the cars. Well, I mean, I suppose, yeah, if you were to get rid of 5%, that's a huge, in terms of traffic. Right. Right, because if you were to, what's the percentage if, if people carpooled? It's some small number. If they all right. carpooled, there would be no traffic, right? So, I mean, I suppose if, if uh, yeah, 5% of the baseball fans didn't use cars to get there, huh? You never know. Yeah. Anyway, it's supposed to take about 14 months for construction, and they're still waiting for the CEQA approvals, which is the environmental studies. Mm -hmm. So, um, hey, once it's built, I can't wait to go check out a game. And speaking of Loop, there's Hyperloop, and I wanted to just give an update to everybody about what's going on with Hyperloop. Uh, for instance, Apple employees might be getting to ride Hyperloop because Cupertino, um, their city council just announced that they are considering hiring one of the Hyperloop companies to build a Hyperloop there. So we're just Hyperloop in general. We don't know which Hyperloop they're going to choose from. Right. I mean, and, and they have some to choose from because they have right. Hyperloop One by Virgin. Yep. Obviously, the boring company or which is SpaceX, which is Loop. Loop. But yep. And then there's Hyperloop TT. So all all three of these companies, Hyperloop One just announced that they are going to be building an R and D center in the tiny village of Bodadia, population of 480 people. Yeah, tiny town. <laughs> yeah. And they're going to be hiring 200 to 300 high tech workers. And then Hyperloop TT is building a test track in Toulouse, France. I just want to point out that all of this stuff came from basically an idea, which, you know, was hatched well before Elon's time. But Elon was like, hey, I think we have the technology to do Hyperloop now. Yeah. You know, I, I think that evacuated to travel is something we can do nowadays. Yeah. I mean, he published a white paper in like 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. And then it just now we have two multi-million dollar companies working on it. So, you know, Tesla gets lawsuits all the time against mm -hmm. them. Well, this time Tesla's suing someone else. They're suing Ontario, Canada. Wow. Why? Well, on July 11th, Ontario Premier Doug Ford's newly elected government got rid of the previous government's EHVIP, which was the Electric and Hydrogen Vehicle Incentive Program, mm -hmm. which offered rebates of up to $14,000 Canadian to cars that were priced under $75,000 as long as they were electric or hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Now, Ontario promised to honor the incentive for cars that were purchased from a dealer before September 10th of this year. But... The province did not extend this to vehicles purchased directly from the manufacturer, only from franchise dealers. Oh, right. All those other car manufacturers that, that directly deliver, like Tesla and Tesla. So just Tesla, basically. Right. And that's what Tesla is suing them for because they seem to have just singled, out, singled one. out What the hell? Yeah. And I mean, if you're a Canadian who bought your car, you were hoping to get that rebate i mean that was probably a big factor in you buying your car of course um so have you heard of the youtube channel called unbox therapy mm, he, no. like unboxes all sorts of cell phones and weird tech gadgets and uh he is like 12 million subscribers okay what does that have to do with tesla uh well he got uh he got to unbox a tesla model 3 no way performance and he loved it Really? Yeah. I mean, he liked the performance. He liked how clean the interior was. He was just the, he had like a 10 minute long video of him just 
just shouting how much he loved the car. Okay, but we're YouTubers and we like the car, so why is this newsworthy? Because he has 12 million subscribers. Oh. So everyone who's watched, you know, him unbox phones and stuff like that, people who would probably be interested in a Model 3 mm -hmm. um, got to see it probably for the first time, you know, <laughs> outside of like, oh, I heard about that, I heard about this. I mean, imagine for the first time seeing it and having someone so excited about it. I think that this is huge having 12 million people exposed to yeah a model 3 for the probably the first time and you know he loved it for all the reasons that he loves you know smartphones and and all sorts of tech gadgets because it's the coolest car it's the car of the future this is the first time he's ever unboxed a car really yeah i think that it makes sense that he unboxed this one because it is the most futuristic of any car there is wow i think that this is really interesting because like because Tesla doesn't advertise, most people have not seen the Model 3. They don't, they have a vague notion of what it might be. They might know that it's electric. It's going to make such an impact. Just this one video. I mean, yeah. 12 million subscribers. Right. That's enormous. Yeah. I Just to put it in perspective, uh -huh. how many people watched the biggest show of the year, which was the Oscars? I don't know. 25 million. Okay. So 12 million, that's half of that are watching this one thing and he's glowing about it, that's huge. True. And you know, another big YouTuber mm -hmm. has also done some plugging for Tesla. Um, MKHB just interviewed Elon right. in the Tesla factory. Right. And although I don't think it was a fantastic interview and I think Elon was super tired, mm -hmm. I do think it was great to, you know, he's got 6 million subscribers and they all got to hear all of Elon's plans for the future, which right. maybe a lot of them didn't know about. Absolutely. I think that a lot of people don't you know, haven't read up on the Tesla master plan part one and two because they're just so freaking awesome. And uh, so, yeah, all all exposure is good exposure. But I think the point is that up until now, the the people who know about Tesla, that number is very small. Yeah, it's true. It's growing very quickly, but it's still very small. Yeah. Um, and so when people are talking about like, oh, there's no demand for the Model 3, it's like, well, first of all, there's huge demand for the Model 3. Um, based on the people who have heard about the car, right. but it's not a you know it's not a Ford. Right. Not everyone has heard about this car company. No. So it, the more people find out about it, the more people are going to be excited about the Model Three, especially when they hear about it from a friend. Right. So we've been reporting on how our home state of Massachusetts has been trying to adopt carbon pricing. Well, it looks like Washington state could beat us to the punch and buy a ballot initiative, no less. Ballot initiative 1631 would charge a fee of $15 per metric ton of carbon beginning 2020. The fee would increase by $2 a ton each year until the state's greenhouse gas reduction goals of 2035 are met and the 2050 goals were on track to be met. Revenue from the fee would go into three funds, one for air quality and energy programs, one for water quality and forest health projects, and one for investments related to communities. Now, the governor of the state, Governor Inslee, said, there's a long tradition in Washington of voters seizing the initiative, literally, and passing things that were way ahead of where the politicians were. This was true on gay marriage, on legalizing marijuana, and on recognizing a woman's right to choose. Good luck, Washington. Get out there and vote on November 6th. All right, so the Neo IPO. What, I'm sorry, the, what new IPO? No, the Neo IPO. Why are you saying new so weird? Neo. Neo, the company Neo. Oh, N I O. Yeah, Neo is that Shanghai based electric car company that makes the ES8, which is the seven seater all aluminum body electric SUV that the company boasts is cheaper in China than the Tesla Model X. Hmm. In fact, it's about half the price. It's about $68,000. As of the end of July, Neo had delivered 481 ES8s and had unfulfilled reservations for more than 17,000 ES8s with deposits. That's interesting. Um, this sounds a lot like Tesla in a way, like they aren't able to produce fast enough, but there's a high demand. True. M much smaller scale, but still demand nonetheless. Right, like an early Tesla. Yeah. So what's interesting here is Neo plans an IPO on the New York Stock Exchange worth about $1.8 billion, which would be the fourth largest IPO this year. Wow. This is a quote here from Neo. They say, our ability to develop and manufacture a car of sufficient quality and appeal to customers on schedule and on a large scale is unproven and still evolving. 
Again, a lot like Tesla. Right. So far this year, NEO has burned through $549 million and $691 million in 2017. Reported revenue the first half of this year of $7 million, um, and they plan to spend $1.8 billion on CapEx over the next three years. Wow. So a lot like Tesla. They're right. going to burn through money to build factories fast. And also like Tesla, they plan to release a smaller cheaper electric except SUV, um, the five-seater ES6 for $35,000. Interesting. I'm going to keep my eye on this IPO. Right. Now, keep in mind that they are making this for the Chinese market. Right. So regulations can be a bit different right. and stuff like that. So if you're like, well, why isn't Tesla making a small SUV for $35,000? Well, that, that might be why. <laughs> right. So everyone's been talking about this New York Times interview. Uh, they got to sit down with Elon for about an hour, um, and they talked about all sorts of things. So we thought we'd cover it for you and give our thoughts. So first, about Elon's physical health. What did he say? He said, it's not been great. Actually, I've had friends come by who are really concerned. And it's true. I mean, he works himself like crazy. Mm -hmm. So referring to the August 7th infamous tweet now about going private at 420, funding secured, here's what the New York Times quoted. That morning, Mr. Musk woke up at home with his girlfriend, the musician known as Grimes, and had an early workout. Then he got in a Tesla Model S and drove himself to the airport. En route, Mr. Musk typed his fateful message. Right. So this is not a quote from Elon. No. This is a quote from the New York Times. And I think that it's a little weird, I guess, um, because it kind of implies that he woke up and just decided to tweet it on the way to the airport. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you would tweet like, hey, everybody. And I, I don't know. They had an hour to sit down with him and an hour to get his exact thoughts and exact quotes. And why wouldn't you ask him to actually get a quotable uh, thing about this? Right. I don't know. Just doesn't it, it doesn't ring right. true. Yeah, there were a lot of weird lines of questioning in this interview. Uh, one of them was about the four hundred twenty dollars a share that uh, the New York Times talked about. That they they wanted to know why four hundred twenty dollars. Elon said it seemed like better karma at four twenty than at four nineteen. But I was not on weed. To be clear, weed is not helpful for productivity. There's a reason for the word stoned. You just sit there like a stone on weed. The article talks a lot about like. By the way, in case you didn't go to sixth grade, 420 means is like synonymous with marijuana. Like, so right. I, first of all, thanks, New York Times, for that news. Um, but also, why did that factor into a New York Times article? Right. Like, how yeah, I mean, unprofessional. This, right. I mean, this article is written by four New York Times reporters. You'd think that they could come up with really great questions. And most of them just lead to things like, well, for instance, this question. Mm -hmm. um, they asked him whether he regretted his Twitter post. And he said, why would I? Exactly. What, why would he regret something that he planned to do? They, they keep going back to make it seem like he didn't intend to do it. Right. Like it was, or, a, or it was a, a mistake or something right. wrong. So he's basically said he has no reason to regret tweeting that. Right. Um, and then there was all this innuendo in the article about his board, the Tesla board, that they don't support him, mm -hmm. that they think that he's having trouble. For instance, they said, some board members, however, have recently told Mr. Musk that he should lay off Twitter and focus on making cars and launching rockets, according to people familiar with the matter. Ooh, who are these people? Because I'm pretty familiar with this. <laughs> right. Do you think it was me who quoted? Maybe. That I'm quoted on? I mean, it's not like they have very sensitive information about Tesla, like, we know the secret formulation for their battery, and here it is, quoted someone familiar with the matter. Like, that. Right. in that case, you'd want to protect their identity. Right. But instead, why not just say, it was Bob from accounting. Like, <laughs> he was like, oh, I heard the board members, but instead we get this, like, cryptic kind of yeah, yeah. who you right. can tell us like that's not gonna right. that's not critical information no one's gonna get fired over that right now we did find out some things that we kind of already knew but maybe a little more detail we found out that he's been working up to 120 hours a week but i do want to point out that this is up to 120 hours a week and it's been recently mm -hmm. so put that with a you know a grain of salt he's he's not working you can't work that many hours a week without mm -hmm. dying so he hasn't been doing it all that often um he has not taken more than a week off since 2001 and that was when he was bedridden with malaria so again i want to parse this that doesn't mean he's never taken a more than a week off um it means that he's never taken more than a week off consecutively right so i mean he can take a week off here and a week off there right 
And so, I don't know, we should just be a little careful with how we... It, they wrote it in such a way that makes it seem like he's never, ever takes time off. Right. Uh, he said, there were times when I didn't leave the factory for three or four days, days when I didn't go outside. This has really come at the expense of seeing my kids and seeing friends. And for instance, he turned 47 on June 28th, and he said that he spent the full 24 hours of his birthday at work. All night, no friends, nothing, he said. Um, and they quoted that he was struggling to get the words out. Right. Um, now, this might, if you're just talking about some random person, I think that this might sound like, oh my goodness. Um, but we are talking about Elon Musk, and from from interviews from people who know him, um, from personal accounts, from just things that we generally know, this isn't too outside the realm of what Elon Musk has been known to do. Right. I mean, when he worked at Zip2, he slept under his desk on a concrete floor with very thin carpeting, no pillow, and then in the morning, he just asked people would that they would kick him to wake him up. Right. That's who he is. He's like, he doesn't need as much sleep as I think everyone thinks he does. He's like, he's gotten, either he's gotten really good at this, or he has like, he, he, it's like two clones, and he's able to just be like, all right, <laughs> maybe, cool, you go to sleep. Maybe he's now. got a twin brother that we don't know about. And speaking of brothers, uh, two days after this, after his birthday, he was scheduled to be the best man at his brother Kimball's wedding in Catalonia, Spain. He flew there directly from the factory, arriving just two hours before the ceremony, and then immediately afterward, he got back on the plane and returned straight to Tesla headquarters. That's... Amazing. It right. shows how dedicated he is to the company. What other CEO can you think of that's so dedicated to the company that they would do that? Most people would take you know two weeks off to go to their brother's wedding. And then here's another quote. I thought the worst of it was over. I thought it was, he said. The worst is over from a Tesla operational standpoint, he continued. But from a personal pain standpoint, the worst is yet to come. He is now bracing, he said, for at least a few months of extreme torture from the short sellers who are desperately pushing a narrative that will possibly result in Tesla's destruction. Referring to short sellers, he added, they're not dumb guys, but they're not super smart. They're okay. They're smartish. Right. So, I mean, this kind of is talking about what we've been talking about in our last In Depth, which was the FUD campaign right. against Tesla. Everyone's feeling it now. It doesn't matter whether you are just a random person on the internet who happens to read or consume uh, media of any kind. They've pulled you, out all the stops. All the stops. Everything, it just seems like it's the end of the world. It constantly seems that way. And and he knows it's continuing and it's right. not going to stop for the next couple of months. So that's a very good indication to everyone out there as you're watching and you're like, well, is this over now? No, it's not it over. It won't be over. They're going to for... be pulling out a lot more tricks. Right. I don't see this stopping until Tesla goes private. It's no, just, I don't it either. It won't end. And I also want to point out that like, you, even I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the FUD. I'm feeling like, like sometimes I'll just like be like, oh, I'm so sad. Right. And then I'm like, wait a minute. This is all a bunch of like crap and but if, if it works on you right it's working on almost everyone else and it's especially like elon has to bear the brunt of it right because he's the like he's the only thing pushing that company forward that's right he's the face of the company right and you know what's funny about this new york times article is that they didn't they kept putting disparaging remarks from the board in there and mm -hmm. then at the very last part they put the board statement and i think it's important to read and this, this is a quoted one this right. is not People familiar with the board, right. people this, familiar with the matter, this is the from board. the board in quotation marks. The board said, there have been many false and irresponsible rumors in the press about the discussions of the Tesla board. We would like to make clear that Elon's commitment and dedication to Tesla is obvious. Over the past 15 years, Elon's leadership of the Tesla team has caused Tesla to grow from a small startup to having hundreds of thousands of cars on the road that customers love, employing tens of thousands of people around the world and creating significant shareholder value in the process. Right. So, that's I mean, what they said. That's the actual quote. Right. They didn't say anything about worried about him this or worried about him that. Right. So that ties right into our next story, Jesse. That is the Tesla whistleblower wannabe number two. Mm -hmm. So you remember Martin Tripp. He was the first Tesla whistleblower. Right. We got another one now. So Carl Hansen, he's a former Tesla security employee at the Gigafactory One in Nevada, and he reportedly filed a whistleblower complaint against Tesla with the SEC, according to his lawyer, which... 
It's a familiar name, Stuart Meisner. Where did I hear that name before? He's the same person who's representing Martin Tripp after he was sued by Tesla. Exactly. Yeah. So Mr. Hansen is uh, alleging that there was uh, drug deals going on at the factory, that there was a uh, Uh, millions of dollars worth of copper stolen Mm -hmm. that tesla was spying on their employees and i think it's important that we read uh, tesla's response to this mr hansen's allegations were taken very seriously when he brought them forward some of his claims are outright false others could not be corroborated so we suggested additional investigative steps to try and validate the information he had received secondhand from a single anonymous source because we wanted to be sure we got this right we made numerous attempts to engage further with mr hansen to understand more about what he was claiming and the work that he did in reaching his conclusions he rejected each of those attempts and to date has refused to speak with the company further it seems strange that mr hansen would claim that he is concerned about something happening within the company but then refuse to engage with the company to discuss the information that he believes he has and if we go back to mr tripp he's now throwing some more money against the wall he's claiming in his one million dollar countersuit against tesla that tesla took punctured battery packs and reworked them and he released some photos of what he claims they did Mm -hmm. and then he claimed with this release of vin numbers that these are the vin numbers of model threes that have these punctured battery packs in them right and this is I think important, this is Tesla's statement in rebuttal. As we've said before, these claims are false and Mr. Tripp does not even have personal knowledge about the safety claims that he is making. No punctured cells have ever been used in any Model 3 vehicles in any way, and all VINs that have been identified have safe batteries. Notably, there have been zero battery safety issues in any Model 3. It's a very good point. Yeah. Uh, Right, no just random Model 3s randomly catching on fire. But again, this goes to the FUD. This goes to the, you know, there's so many whistleblower complaints and lawsuits against any major corporation. Mm -hmm. If you were to put that in the national news, we'd never get through it all. Right. And yet, when Tesla has some crazy claim against them, it becomes national news. And the only reason we're reporting it here is because we want to make sure you hear the full side of the story. Okay, but what about the SEC filing uh, subpoenas against Mr. Musk and Tesla. Huh? What about that? The CEO of the company. Federal investigation. But it's a federal investigation because it's the SEC, which is, you know, investigates most companies. But, you know, what about that? Well, what if every time the SEC wrote an email to a company, it was federal investigation? I... The, That's what I'm talking about here. The SEC has investigated Tesla a number of times. That's what they do. That's their normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. Anytime, in fact, Elon's done any major tweeting about the company, they've investigated. And why? Because the shorts usually call them up and say, you must investigate this. What Elon did with that fateful August 7th tweet about going private at 420 was he wanted to make sure that everybody knew about what he was going to do. And that means everybody, every shareholder. So he tweeted it on his 22 million follower Twitter account, got picked up by news outlets everywhere within minutes. So everyone knew what he was going to do. The first story was within eight minutes. Right. I mean, I just want to point that out. Like there was an effect, there was a right. story by a newspaper in eight minutes. The major thing that the SEC is investigating is whether or not there was some kind of insider trading or whether he disclosed the information the publicly, correct way, right. publicly. That's the most public way you can disclose the information. Right. He did. And they're going to find, like they always find, that there was no problem with it. Right. It's just great news for the next couple weeks to be like, he's under SEC subpoena and under SEC investigation. It's a a great dog and pony show. You can Mm -hmm. just be like, whoa, we can call it this fancy name that makes everyone think that it's bad. And it's a federal agency, so it's going to take a while to straighten it out. Okay, but I mean, there's no other car manufacturer with CEOs that are in trouble. That's just, there's none, right? You do remember the one story we've been talking about for weeks. What's that one? Do you remember former Audi chief Rupert Stadler? Uh, what what about him? Well, he's been in jail now for the past, uh, s- since June. So how many weeks is that? Like seven, seven weeks. weeks yeah. um, and he tried to get the German courts to let him out. And guess what? They said, no, you stay in jail during your trial. So the, the, the former CEO of, of Audi. The, of Audi, a major corporation, is in jail right now. No, but Tesla is in bigger trouble, right? I mean, they're in the SEC, right? I know. Yeah. See, I mean, that's, oh, that's, but they, that's, but, uh, but that's all we've been hearing about. 
that's the crazy part and that's why we're here right we want to make sure that you guys hear about what's really going on in the world and right. to put it in perspective here is a head of a major german auto manufacturer who's been sitting in jail and the court won't let him out because they say there is strong evidence that he turned a blind eye to the corporate shenanigans at the heart of the company's global diesel scandal. There's also a risk he may tamper with evidence, the court said in a statement last Monday. This is, by the way, a 27 billion euro um, penalty. penalty that they've had to pay. So you're saying Audi is in trouble mm -hmm. and they're going to have to pay what is basically essentially half of what Tesla's worth. Right. But you're not hearing about this in the American press at all. I mean, that's that's insane. Yeah. I mean, Volkswagen rejected claims that senior executives such as Stadler were aware of the criminal scheme that stretched over almost a decade. And there is a strong suspicion that Stadler allowed the engines to be deployed and to be sold despite knowing about the manipulation or deliberately turning a blind eye on the manipulation. Mm -hmm. That's a quote from the court. Wow. He's been in custody since June 18th. Prosecutors claim he was tampering with evidence because of a phone call in which he suggested putting a witness on leave. Oh, well, that is that is a bit damning, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit more than an SEC investigation. Right, that's your CEO's in jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, when people are... are asking you about the sec investigation be like oh didn't you hear that that audi's chief has been in jail since june and they won't let him out because he's gonna tamper with evidence yeah exactly it's so annoying it it's is. so stupid it is why like why can't we just have an equal mm -hmm. conversation about this stuff right. why does it have to be dog and pony shows right. and then just silence mm -hmm. ridiculous it is hey it's time for the lightning round here we go all right, so you heard of these uh, electric scooters there, haven't you? I, I own one, yes. Yeah. So Qualtrics is a company, and they surveyed over 500 adults across the U.S. who were familiar with, like, Skip and Lime and other um, of these electric scooter rental companies. Mm -hmm. They found out that 55% think that they are a lasting innovation. Hmm. And of those who actually have rented them, so 176 people had actually rented them, of those people, 72% were positive. Interesting. We'd like to know what you think. So put your comment down below. Have you ridden one of these rental, you know, shareable scooters? And what'd you think? All right. So check this out. All right. BMW developed a robot charging arm. Look at that. It's a robot charging arm. You've never oh. seen that before, have you? Um, I feel like I have. But it, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. So get this. Mm -hmm. Bernhard Wazel said, for the first time, we have succeeded in a robot-based charging station, autonomously charging several vehicles, one behind the other, without the vehicles being specifically adapted for it. You, you know, it just, I think it came to me. Yeah. The, the charging arm that I'm thinking of yeah. uh, was this one. Oh, is this new? Did, didn't we, is this a new, should we make a new story for this uh, one? No, no, th this, this came out actually three years ago. Uh, this is Tesla's. Uh, autonomous charging arm but okay well then why haven't we seen it uh well i mean they haven't rolled it out or anything right so i mean w w but, but but i mean this one they they made this one well i mean yeah this one's cool it's a little clunkier looking um but anyway i mean this one was funded by a bunch of european oems mm -hmm. and uh, includes bmw and uh i mean it's fine looking now, I mean, what is the importance of having an autonomous charging arm? Is it just for convenience? Is it just so I can, like, pull up in my car and just jump out and, like, walk over to wherever I'm going? And then... No. There's... The big point is this is for our autonomous driving future. This okay. is for when we just call a car and we have it come pick us up. And then when we're done, we need it to go, go charge itself. And that's why you need a robot to do it. Okay. And so... This is really cool. If they're working on it, too, it means that everyone kind of knows this is the future. Autonomous driving cars. Go check out our series on it, by the way. Right. All right, so check this out. This is the Tesla family portrait. These are all the cars that they've made so far, except for the original Tesla Roadster. Oh, I thought you were talking about this family portrait of, uh, of JB, Elon, Franz in front of the fireplace. They are not kin. <laughs> Still, I thought it was their family portrait. No, no, no. The, we're talking about the cars here because gotcha. they are a true family. Gotcha. Um, this is going to look like our driveway soon. Yeah, uh, minus the Model S, I guess. And minus the runway. That could be our Christmas card. That could be our Christmas card, yeah. And, and we would also have the next-gen roaster as well, so. Yeah, it'd be even the, better Christmas card. Star on top of the Christmas tree kind of thing. Uh, what's going on with this thing? So this is a surfboard of sorts. But it goes up in the air. Uh, yeah, so Wait, it uses... you can surf above the waves? 
Yeah, it's a hydrofoil. This uses a 30 pound lithium ion battery pack. It is a wireless Bluetooth controller. Carbon fiber construction can go up to 25 miles an hour for an hour. Okay, so it's got a one hour range, basically one hour life. Yeah, um, at top speed. And it costs $12,000. Okay, a little pricey, but still, what a fun-looking toy that is. Absolutely. So, I mean, instead of getting the, the jet ski or, or whatever, maybe you get something a little bit more surfy if you're a surfy kind of person. Yeah. So, here's a fun little map that I found. Okay. What's this map? Um, so, this is a map oh, cute little of, circles. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are crude oil and hazmat pipeline spills from 2015 to 2017. Wait a minute. All those circles are spills? Yeah, isn't that fun? For just the past two and a half years? Yeah, isn't that really fun? Are they little teeny spills? No, no, no. Uh, the, so far the total is about 3.6 million gallons of crude oil uh spilled over the last two and a half years it's like a spill a day oh my god uh actually it's a, a rate of over a spill a day um from pipelines me? and and stuff like that that's and well in this uh you know what this doesn't count all the natural gas leaks but you know pipelines you know with with crude oil just just pump it right it's so easy there's nothing that can go wrong well, I mean, it, well, we didn't count all the electricity spills. Think about all the electricity spills that there were from all of those. Oh, right. All of those other, those electricity pipelines. That's true. Think about that. All the wind spills, oh, all oh, the sun God. spills. What are we doing? Look at, look at this. This is ridiculous. All right. So the DOT has come up with their sound rules. Uh, the Department of Transportation in the U.S. has finalized their rules to make EVs louder whenever they're driving under 18.6 miles per hour. This is so stupid. I know. I didn't even want to report this. Jesse didn't want to report it either. So by 2019, September, they're going to have to, all manufacturers, 50% of their cars are going to have to make a sound. And all of their cars by September of 2020 are going to have to make a sound. And the this reason is... for it is that NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, estimates that the odds of a hybrid vehicle being involved in a pedestrian crash are 19% higher than those of legacy vehicles. About 125,000 pedestrians and cyclists are injured each year on U.S. roads. Now, we don't want people to get injured. No. I highly, highly doubt that their data is correct, that a quiet EVs are running into people all over the place. And I want to point out that when we drive electric cars and when a car is driving below 18 miles an hour, there's still sound. You there's a lot still of tire noise. You quite hear it. I would say most of the what you hear when, when a car is driving by, it doesn't matter which car it is, no. if it's a newer-ish car, you know, if you take care of it, you can barely hear it anyway. That's right. I mean, a lot of new um, gas cars are quiet. Right. Let's be honest, When especially at those speeds, and the, they're, they're very quiet. And in fact, a lot of them actually shut off at low speeds in, as well. So, like, I don't see why they're singling out EVs. And I hope that you're able to just yank that thing out because... I'm definitely... There's, I'm not going to own... You can, you can arrest me off of this evidence right now. If I own an electric car, it's not going to have a noisemaker in it. I swear to God, I'll find that thing. I'll take a screwdriver. I'll, ah, 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 and just ram it out of my... I do not need a speaker, a waterproof speaker on the well, outside of my car. Luckily for Jesse, this will be a manufacturing rule and not an ownership rule. It better not be. I will pay the fines. I don't care. My car is going to be dead silent. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. Um, this week, we've got Micah in Israel. Take it away. All right, hey there, Zach and Jesse. This is Micah. I'm currently here in Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, tel I'm in Israel. Israel is about the size of New Jersey, and it's about the same shape of New Jersey. Um, in this country, it's very small. The furthest anyone would ever have to drive under like extreme circumstances at once is like six hours. And most people live within you know, like an hour's drive where they have to go to work and like a two hour drive of the next city and a two and a half hour drive to Jerusalem, which is the capital here. So I was hanging out with one of my um, friends that, that used to live here and I asked him, you know, if you're living in a country the size of New Jersey where most people are doing, you know, small drives. If I was Tesla Motors right now, I'd have five superchargers and that's all I would need for this entire country. Um, why don't you guys have electric cars here? And I got a really interesting response. The answer is, is that there was a company that did make electric cars and came here and this is like a super techie startup culture kind of country and all these people got super excited because they were in electric cars and their big thing was that instead of having charging stations the way that you have a Tesla you know, plug-in, they were going to have these really big um, stations where you actually get your battery like taken out and replaced. 
and it was a really big deal and everyone was super excited and then the price got way too high and it got way too over hyped and people didn't have like the best experience in the car anything was that special and then evs just died all right this is a country that should have electric vehicles and other than electric bikes a handful of those zero electric motorcycles there's nothing so i think that this is really a, a good reason for people like zach and jesse to be very critical of car companies and i'm very proud of you guys for being critical um because it's without that criticism car companies would continue to make the same mistake that this car company did and if we have people have a bad impression of electric cars from you know whether it's like the nissan leaf to having a range or you know some other crappy issue then evs could just die in the u.s and we need to be critical and we need people like zach and jesse to keep us critical and Shabbat Shalom from uh, Tel Aviv. Thank you, back to you Zach and Jesse, how you know. That's really interesting. He brings up an interesting point, um, which is that if people are exposed to the wrong kind of electric car, it's going to turn them off to electric cars in general. Right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Don't forget to go to patreon.com, support us for as little as a buck a month that you get to watch all our Patreon bonus stories and you support the show. See you in a minute. <laughs> All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories, and it's time for our shout-outs. And uh, remember that at the end of our shows from now on, everyone who gets a shout-out also gets to be on our end plate. Yep. So that's pretty cool. All right, who do we got this week, Jesse? This week, we have Roger Huekeroff. Philippe Gorenson. Brian Murray. Mike McHale. Stanley Luce. Bram Van Ijk. Peter Markowski. And Charles. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for supporting the show. All right, it's time for the Elon Tweet of the Week. What do we got? So I don't know if all of you know this, but you can listen to this show in your Tesla as a podcast. It's the same exact show, except you don't get to see us. Um, but you get to listen to us in your Tesla using TuneIn, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool, but what does that have to do with the Elon's Tweet of the Week? Well, coming in software version 10, uh, you should be able to stream video in your Tesla so that, uh, you know, Netflix and YouTube and stuff like that. How do you know that? Uh, because Elon tweeted it, so it must be true. Wait, so this is the tweet from Ben Alander. He said, love the P3D. Any chance of getting video streaming Netflix, YouTube to watch while charging? Elon said version 10, so... So version, version 10, 10, I guess. That's I mean, going to be so cool. I yeah. can't tell you. I mean, being able to watch a video in your car, like when you're parked, obviously parked, uh, would, be, <laughs> yes. would yes. be really I cool. I think that will be uh, important yes. that it is parked. Or, 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 or <laughs> version 10, let's be let's be real. Version oh, 9 is going to have a bunch of oh, uh, some drivey features. Wait a minute. Is that what you're saying? Software it, 10 might be... Autonomous. Hey, watch this movie. Because... Think about it. You're watching the movie, right? And maybe it still is making sure that you're paying, you know, maybe awake. Because what it could do is it could pause the movie and well, be like, no, what, we what, need you to take over quickly. What if you're in level five? And yes, if you're in level five. But what I'm saying is if there's some scenario where you need to take over, it can pause the movie. Oh, like level four. Yeah. And be like, quickly, you need to take uh -huh. over the wheel. And then you can be like, okay, I guess I can stop watching Tesla Time News and begin driving my car again. Wow. Eh? I'm just saying, I don't that, know. That's complete conjecture. Okay. So do not. I like it. It's time for community mail time. Community mail time. So our friend Hart just got his Model 3 and he sent us this video about it. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Hart Wells here. I just wanted to share with you an interesting difference I found between the newer versions of the Model 3 and the older ones. And I might be wrong here, but I took delivery about a week ago at the beginning of August. And I think that the contour of the back seat here is a little bit more curvy and then allows for a little bit more comfort um, for the rear uh, people, passengers. So you've got a little bit of a bump here. And so if you were to fold down the seats, um, it's not gonna fold as flat as if you were in one of the older versions of the Model 3. I think that this is more of an angle um, than I've seen in other cars, but it adds for just a little bit more comfort for the passengers in the back. So. I'm a fan of it. Uh, I will sacrifice a little bit of flatness for the car camping in favor of some passenger comfort at the back. And dear God, it's a fantastic passenger ride. I let my friend drive the other day and it is gorgeous to be back there. All right, uh, the more you know, stay awesome. So the back seat 
It's got more cushion in the back seat. I noticed that in the Performance Model 3 that we were in. Oh. Yeah, that cushy back seat it is felt better. cushy. Nice. Yes. This is our buddy Franz. He just got his used 2015 Tesla Model S90D, and he says, here it is. I'm so happy. The best car I've ever had. This is driving the future. And uh, our friend Daniel noticed these while visiting Bermuda. Yeah, so Bermuda is so small that they don't allow car rentals only scooters but they do allow these electric renault twizzies that's really cool yeah. thank you daniel for sharing that with us and uh, our buddy fabio in brisbane australia just got the invite to see the first model 3 in australia and here are pics he says he won't be sleeping until the big day which luckily is tomorrow so mm -hmm. get some sleep fabio our friend tamara got her model 3 um she said that it was worth the 862 day wait <laughs> wow that's a long wait it it, it is <laughs> All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer comments. And we asked, what do you think about the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund investing in a private Tesla? We got this from Gavin James. Well, people focus on Saudi Arabia as the largest oil producer in the world. They often forget we Americans are the largest oil consumer in the world. Nobody's innocent in this situation. If their private funding will help Tesla achieve its goals and accelerate EV solar battery growth, then I'm all for it. Right. Um, we haven't talked much about the Saudi Foreign Wealth Fund investing in making a private tesla i don't think we have enough facts that is why we are we are waiting until we know everything before we start our analysis basically right. we also asked our patreons who would you like to see tesla hire as number two executive because we've all been talking about how elon would probably do better if he had someone like a gwyn shotwell mm -hmm. and lewis vaughn said does gwyn shotwell have a twin sister that would be kind of perfect It'd if be she did really weird if she did <laughs> That would be. It's time for supercharger reviews. This is where everybody out there goes and shoots superchargers and destination chargers. They upload their videos to our website. Um, and you know about this, right? You can go on our website and and go see these videos. We have like hundreds of supercharger yeah, reviews Like we're the now. only place out there that has this. Right. And you in can fact, see them. You can see what they look like. You can see what's all around them. So you can be like, oh, I'm going on a date. And, and you, Where should I take my date to supercharge? And you can be like, do I want to go to the one next to the Arby's or the one with the really nice view? I'm just saying. Good point. You can check it out ahead of time. That is a good point. Yeah. And, and we just heard from Tesla that they're going to have destination charger reviews in the car. So maybe they'll link to our site. Hey, I'm just saying we've got all the all the links, right. so we'll hook you up, Tesla. Let That's us right. know, you know, if you're a Tesla employee who's in charge of that. Yeah, just get in contact with us. All right, know? here That's we go. I'm saying. So hi, Zach and Jesse. It's Chris again. I'm doing a supercharger review here in Mount Jackson, Virginia. Mount Jackson, Virginia is located in the middle of the state. It's right off of Route 81, probably less than a minute. Very convenient location. This is an eight stall supercharger and it's located on a sheets uh, property a sheets uh, convenience store and gas station a lot of uh, great amenities at this gas station um, of which one I noticed they had a drive-through uh, you know that you could order their their great sandwiches that sheets offers and I also noticed that inside they had a nice bathroom facility and they also had uh, showers. Uh, I, I believe this place is open 24 hours a day. So this is a really, really good location. And I would actually rate this a 10 out of 10. This is one of the best I've ever been to. And now you know. Hey, Saik and JC. Proud to show you this from Silao, Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico. Uh, um, I think these chargers, they have maybe two months of open it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, just six stalls here in Silao. You can find on the Fiesta Inn Hotel. And behind the Fiesta Inn, you can see there's a Chili's, a Mario too. And, oh, I see another stall there. Maybe that's the number six. You see that, that one right there? Keep doing a great job, Zach and JC. Thank you. We'll see you around. Hey, Zach and Jesse. It's Rocco again. Uh, we are at the St. Joseph Supercharger. Of all these places. If you just run, you can see my three and an S pulled up after us. Yeah, all these places. We ate at Panera. My dog Onyx. 
Uh, you can sit outside at a um, picnic table with an overhang there. There's a few other, most grill, um, five guys, a couple other places to eat. Um, otherwise, this one's probably like a six out of ten. Not too many choices, but better than nothing. Uh, coming to you live from Miami uh, in the beautiful design district, the new Ica Garage. Uh, we have eight new Tesla superchargers. They're actually the urban design model uh, here in the garage. And the beauty also, we have 10 EV uh, uh, charge point chargers uh, right next to them. So it's a great entry level uh, to EV users, potentially becoming Tesla owners uh, in the near future. We give it a 10 out of 10, uh, just based on location. It's again in the design district, which is amazing shopping, high-end retail, uh, and mere steps away from Midtown Miami, which is uh, also great for restaurants and shopping. So again, Miami design district. Best part of my week. Absolutely. Watching those. All right, we got a couple new superchargers this week. What do we got, Jess? Number 220 in China is the six stall at the Longyang Wanda Realm Hotel, China. And number 560 in the USA, number 1344 in the world is the eight stall in Houston, Northwest Freeway, Texas. What do we got for Be Free this week? Uh, so this week we got Jack White from the White Stripes. Wait, the Jack White? The Jack White, he played a concert at the Wow Factory for free, free concert at the Fremont Factory. Wow, so he's officially one of our Be Freeze then, I guess. He is technically, officially one of our Be Freeze because- This is free stuff this for is Elon a, employees. This is uh, bans for rewarding <laughs> Elon employees. And that's what he did. He did that exactly. By the way, he has owned a Tesla since 2014. Awesome. We've had 38 companies now, Jesse, mm -hmm. that are supporting our Be Free. 30, 38 companies in one band. That's right. And so, I mean, hey, bands, if you want to give Elon employees free like house parties. Yeah. That, I didn't even there think of that. There should just be constant bands playing at the Fremont factory. I love Come that. Come on, just con just what, what what would it cost? Wouldn't that be cool if every Friday it was like another band yeah. playing? Wow. That would, be, that would be awesome. Let's get this up to 100 companies and bands. Yeah, I, and if we get like 100 companies, this is that's news basically yeah. we're going to be able to be like hey wall street journal check this out yeah. there are a hundred companies willing to give free stuff to yeah. elon employees and they're going to be like wow i can print that because that's interesting and people will read it because that's the number 100 in it and then your business gets on the wall street journal exactly i'm just saying it's a win-win it's a win-win we like to talk about past videos of ours and um this is a video that's not really not ours. ours no no it's a uh, unity unity mm -hmm. in sweden they interviewed us and they called us ev experts so i thought we have to promote this absolutely. video absolutely so, so go check this out it's uh, showing our amazing ev expertness and go check out the unity's youtube channel they have a wonderful YouTube yeah. channel. You're going to enjoy that. All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway. It's the Patreon giveaway. All right, while Zach is getting the big metal cylinder of doom, um, we're giving away Sky Tropolis this week. Yeah, you have security contract to build the world's first vertical mega city. Start spinning it, Jess. Okay. Start with a plot of land and build upwards into the sky, designing your ideal Skytropolis tower. Decide everything from the architectural design to every part of the interior. Do you maximize profit or use up resources from the surrounding city? Or balance sustainability by providing eco-friendly interiors and your own power generation? Wow. Does this sound fun? This sounds super fun. I want to go play fun. this after we're done with the show. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you can put solar and wind all over your your mega tower. Yeah, and this is a be free company, by the way. Yeah, so There's, you're helping to support. Yeah, because if you're an Elon employee, you can get this game free. All right, well, someone else is going to get this game. Yeah, for one free. of our Patreons. To get in this, by the way, yeah. be a Patreon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have. All right, what do we got this week, Jess? We have Paul Dean. Paul Dean. Help support us on Patreon. Awesome. Thank you so much. Paul, we're going to um, get you a copy of Skytropolis. Yes. Uh, so you'll hopefully you have a Steam account and we can get that all yeah. worked out. So you know that Wonder Capital supports the show, Jesse? They support this show and that is amazing. It's so helpful. I wanted to show this. This is their 2017 year in review. They give this to all investors and mm -hmm. anyone can check this out. But one thing I wanted to show, um, really cool. They had financing requests per month. They grew from $20 million a month to $100 million a month in 2017. Wow. That's people wanting their financing. Mm -hmm. Basically, be people begging, please help finance my solar panels. <laughs> they have a huge solar projects pipeline. And this is the only kind of pipeline we like, like on the show. I don't like pipelines. No, but this pipeline you do like, Jesse, because this 
this is solar project pipelines. That so means it, there's no oil spills. No oil. This is okay, all good. solar yeah, project. Yeah. They have just huge ones. So in 2017 alone, they helped build over 37 megawatts of solar projects in places like Kauai, Hawaii. Wow. California Department of Water and Power. Washington, D.C. at a nonprofit theater and at charter schools. Oklahoma, Virginia, Illinois, Ohio. I mean, wow. I could go on and on. Just check this out. We'll put the link down below. Mm -hmm. You can check it out for yourself. If you have like any questions about the company, this helps answer them because mm -hmm. there's talks about all their funds. It has cool testimonials from people like me who get 7.5% by investing in the sun. I feel so good about myself. Okay. Actually. Okay. But do you actually get the 7.5% yep. returns? Is it just, is this like some sort of average and you're just hoping it, that it's going to go it, back up or something it's or what? An, it's an average. Okay. It's some, some months it's higher, some months it's lower, but it averages their seeking 7.5% okay, and I've had it for like seven months now mm -hmm. and it's been averaging actually higher than that. I'm just so excited. You're putting this. your money to work yeah. to build solar in the world. Right. I pat myself on the back like all the time. <laughs> All right, so you can head over to Wonder Capital, uh, check them out. They help support the show, so maybe help support them, support the world for sustainable and support energy. You. Right. Support it's, everything. It's really cool. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode of Tesla Time News. Who, so, who are all these people? Over these there? are all of our wonderful Patreons who we've given shout outs to. These are people who support us for over $5 or more a month. Um, so. Wow. Huge kudos to those people. There's a lot of people over yeah. there. Yeah. If you want to help support the it's show, still going. you can either join these people on Patreon. Um, you can head over to Amazon. You can use our Amazon affiliate link. So if you're buying stuff on Amazon for, you know, birthdays or... Wait, what is that? So you use our... You click on the code down below. You go over to Amazon. You do all your normal shopping. Um, and then at the end, you buy it and they send it to you. But how are we involved in all that? We, we make a percentage of the sales. How do we? Wow, that's we got in there, huh? Yeah, wow, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's I don't know why in. Amazon does this, but they do it. So if you're shopping, just you know, use our uh, use our use our affiliate link. Also, if you were planning on buying a Model Three Performance Edition because it's the coolest car in the world, um, you can use our. Well, hang on there, hang on there. Sparky would argue that the Model X is pretty damn uh, cool. Okay. Or if you're buying the Model X, which is another coolest car in the world, or the Model S, okay. um, you can use uh, Zach's referral code, and that will help us to uh, get a Roadster, next generation Roadster, which we will drive to your house and give you a test ride in um, with the SpaceX package and whatever ridiculousness they end up putting. Because uh, keep in mind, this is a couple of years away. Am I going to have to get some goggles? Like some racing goggles when I drive in the... They're going to have to be behind your eyeballs to keep your eyeballs from absolutely like flying back into your brain. Um, yeah, it's going to be... You better watch out. So anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Now you know.